name is Bridget and I'm a telecommunicator here at Ramsey County Emergency Communication Center. I've been here for the past four years. I answer telephone calls and I initiate calls for a squad response. I also work in data and that's a point of reference for officers to call up and if they need certain resources available, make that happen in the data circle. I had a young woman that was calling in regards to the fact that she was sort of having a mental breakdown and she could not be around her child. She had to leave the domicile that she was living in um, and she left in such a way that she was in really a hurry. She was in her nightgown. It was at night um, and she was screaming, requesting police to go and check on her three-year-old child. Um, she knew that she was ill, that there was something wrong with her um, and that the issue was psychological in nature. She mentioned something about the child was trying to control her and wouldn't stop crying and she had to leave because she feared she would do something terrible. Um, but she was riddled with guilt and she felt certain that someone was going to go in and steal her baby and the baby would in some way be victimized. Um, and in that particular call I used every last possible comforting resource I could to let her know she did the right thing. Calling the police was the right thing to do and that we went in and had her placed and also made sure that the safety of the child was, was the main concern. And I think that she, by the time squads arrived on scene, she was satisfied with the service we were providing. Well, she was screaming at the top of her lungs to begin with. Um, this is not unusual for a number of our callers. People don't typically call the police and they are all that calm. You know, there's usually some pretty intense situation that they're responding to. And it's hard to keep your behavior modified, you know, to speaking in a way that, you know, in civil society we consider to be normal. You know, your voice is louder and you're talking really quickly and indistinctly perhaps. And so when we're on the line with our callers, we try to maintain a tone that is not in any way condescending or like we're scrutinizing our callers, but one that is genuine concern and also a sense of assurance. We're going to be here for you. It's extremely calming to know that someone's confident about providing you assistance when you are in your time of need. Um, so I think a lot of it has to do with tone, modifying your tone, and even despite all provocation to maintain that calm and to empathize with your caller, recognize the situation that they're in. And they don't want to feel judged. They want to feel like they're being heard and understood and something is happening to benefit the situation overall. You know, I think that if there is a question of safety, call 911. We're certainly not going to be upset if you ask a question and we think maybe the non-emergency line would be more appropriate. We can make that referral, we can give that information. Um, typically, if there is life or limb at risk, call us. Call us. We're here 24 hours a day. We have a wonderful resource known as Language Line, and it is available 24 hours a day, just like 911 is. And we have to be able to discern what the language or the dialect is. Um, and as soon as we can do that, then we will patch the call in with Language Line and advise them that we have this sort of call with this sort of dialect or language and then language line will find us an interpreter. And as soon as you get the interpreter on the line, everything goes swimmingly. It can be a little intense prior to that, especially because it's hard to reassure anyone if you don't know their language. Let them know that we're getting help on the way. Um, but that is an amazing resource. I can't imagine our job without it. Also, this, this is one that I'll never forget just because in a call I actually had to put, and you do have to, faithfully describe what it is the problem is. There was a caller who was sure that someone was um, peeping in on him and he wanted a squad to come out and people were spying on him. But again, the things that you start to hear 
make you wonder if this is maybe just cooked up in someone's mind. And I said, well, how was anyone peeping in on you? He lived on the third floor of an apartment building. And he said, well, they're standing on their hovercraft. So I got to put a hovercraft in the call. That was kind of exciting. <laughs>